Festicis or penis grand planté, pistachios or pine nuts, a great plenty, is one of 32 recipes in a culinary collection that is now part of an early 14th century book of miscellaneous prose and verse in four languages, Anglo-Norman, English, French and Latin. The recipes are written in Anglo-Norman, the dialect of Old French that evolved in late medieval England after the Norman conquest of 1066. The style is terse. The name of the dish, a list of ingredients with minimal direction on cooking, and a note on the colour of the dish is pretty much all you get for each recipe. Of personal interest to me, as someone who can't eat gluten, is that the pastry cases for the pistachio tarts, the coffins, are made with chestnut flour, fleur de chastaines, thus gluten-free. Also fascinating is the ingredient gingerbread, or gingerbread in English. This was not at this time a cakey or biscuity affair, but rather a spiced toffee confection purchased by elite households. One box of gingerbread, costing two shillings and four pennies, and a further four pounds of gingerbread, at twelve shillings, appear in the household records of Eleanor de Montfort, Countess of Leicester and Pembroke, for the year 1265. In my adaptation of the pistachio version of the tart, I've simplified matters so you don't have to go through the labour of making gingerbread yourself. Now for the recipe. Let's start by making the pastry. I find that a 50-50 ratio of chestnut flour and gluten-free plain or general purpose flour gives me what I'm looking for. A pastry case robust enough to hold the filling, but one that is still fine enough to qualify as elegant pastry. Indeed, it's possible the medieval cook may have had in mind a combination of chestnut and fine wheat flours. So here I'm sifting together 60 grams of organic chestnut flour and 60 grams of gluten-free flour, along with a pinch of salt and quarter of a teaspoon of xanthan gum, used in modern gluten-free baking as a binding agent. Some brands of gluten-free flour already have it added. Then I give the flour mix a good stir. Then add 120 grams of beaten egg yolks, about six or seven yolks from large eggs. I freeze the whites and use them for making meringues. I work in the yolks, then draw the dough together with my hand. A brief kneading of the dough follows, which just makes it smoother. I then rest the dough for 15 minutes in the fridge. Once rested, I roll out the dough on a well-floured surface. You do need to be patient rolling it out, as it is stiffer than a short crust pastry dough. This is where my heavy marble rolling pin comes into its own. So I roll it out very thin, to about 3 or 4 millimetres. I'm making four individual tart cases and I'm making sure each quarter has enough pastry to fit not just the bottom, but the side of each metal tart tin. I find this dough easy to work with. It doesn't usually tear, even when this thin, and so I don't have any problems lining the tart tins. One little tip I've picked up, but I can't remember from where, is that you can use a small piece of spare dough to press the rolled pastry right into the tin. Using a sharp knife, I trim off the excess pastry. I prick the base of each of the pastry cases as this prevents the dough from rising up too much in the oven. They go into the centre of my fan oven at 180 degrees, that's 200 Celsius in a non-fan, or 390 Fahrenheit, for 12 minutes. Once baked, I pop them on a cooling rack. As you see, they're pretty rigid and so easy to remove from their tins. Time to make the pistachio toffee filling. 
First, I take some dry white wine, about 90 millilitres, three fluid ounces, and add to this 50 grams of golden cane sugar and a pinch of saffron, about 10 strands, ground up with my fingers. I bring this to the boil, stirring continuously, and reduce it by half. It takes about two minutes. Then to my golden hued syrup, I add one teaspoon of ground ginger and a quarter of a teaspoon of ground black pepper. And then a dash, one eighth of a teaspoon, of ground cloves, followed by 140 grams of light honey. I think light rather than dark honey works well in this recipe because it allows the flavour of the pistachios to come through. I bring the mixture gradually to the boil and maintaining a medium heat and using a sugar thermometer, I bring it to 110 Celsius or 230 degrees Fahrenheit, which is known in sugar confectionery terms as the thread stage. Now I prefer heating it to this stage rather than say another 5 degrees, which is the soft ball stage, as I feel it gives the filling just the right level of gentle chewiness once it cools. But don't worry if you take it a few degrees higher. Once there, in go the pistachios, 200 grams. Before I fill my tart cases with the pistachio toffee, I just have time to brush off any excess flour they may have. You can see how robust and crisp chestnut pastry cases are. Then the mixture is divvied up. The toffee does look quite runny at the moment, but it will set thicker as it cools. I like to make sure I get every pistachio and every vestige of toffee out of the pan and into those cases. Once the toffee has set, I impatiently wait for 20 minutes or so for this. I can eat my pistachio tarts. The Moorish nuttiness of pistachios melding beautifully with the spicy warmth of gingerbread toffee and all perfectly encased in the naturally sweet chestnut pastry.